Imagine waking up one day feeling unexplainably tired. It almost feels as if your blood sugar levels are a bit low. You eat something and forget about it. Later during the day, you notice the tingling sensation in your fingers. You think to yourself, hmm, that's strange. But it goes away and you continue as normal. Lunch hour hits and you grab your sandwich. All of a sudden, urgent need to visit the bathroom hits. You just went to the loo 20 minutes ago. Anyways, lunch hour is over and it's time to get back to work. However, you still feel hungry, even after you just had a massive meal. Does this sound familiar? These are all the symptoms of insulin resistance developing. Odds are you've heard about the condition somewhere before, but nobody could really tell you what it is or how it works. So in today's video, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into how insulin resistance develops, the physiology behind it, and how you can 100% reverse it. If you don't know who I am yet, my name is Stefan, I have my degree in sports science and biokinetics and on this channel you'll only find science-based videos discussing anything and everything fitness and health related. Insulin resistance often sounds super complicated in the beginning and many people believe that once you're insulin resistant, you can't really change it. Some people even go as far as to say that they are overweight because they are naturally insulin resistant. Let me give you some hope. A few years back, researchers analyzed a bunch of studies that included over 200,000 participants. And they concluded insulin resistance is completely reversible and you can get to a healthy point again. So, for us to understand how we can reverse this condition, we first have to understand how it actually works. Insulin is a hormone produced in the pancreas. And the primary function of insulin is to help lower blood glucose levels. The moment you eat something, especially carbs, it enters the stomach and gets broken down. It then gets transported into the bloodstream in the form of blood glucose or blood sugar. If left unattended, your blood glucose levels will keep on rising and rising until you start to develop symptoms such as blurry vision, rapid heart rates and in some severe cases, could even lead to nervous system damage. This is where the pancreas step in. The pancreas notices this rise in blood glucose and start to produce more insulin. The insulin travels to where the blood glucose is high, attaches to the cell receptors, the cells open up, the glucose go into the cell, and that's how your blood glucose levels get lowered. That's it. That's how your body regulates blood sugar levels. If the reverse is needed, if your blood sugar levels get too low, the body will release a hormone called glucagon, which will go get those glucose molecules again and help stabilize the blood sugar levels. So where does insulin resistance come into play? And why is it so dangerous? Remember those cells I mentioned earlier? The ones that take up glucose once the blood sugar levels get too high? Well, if a person consumes bad fats for a prolonged period of time, this fat will bind around the cell and the insulin can't bind to the cell receptors anymore, meaning it will struggle to get that glucose into the cell meaning the body can't lower its blood glucose levels and is now in trouble. Luckily for us, the pancreas have a trick up its sleeve. It drastically increases the amount of insulin produced, hoping that there will just be so many insulin molecules around that one of them have to break through the fat and trigger the cell to open up. This is what happens initially and you don't really feel a thing. All is well from the outside. The unfortunate reality of this, however, is that over prolonged periods of time, the insulin producing cells get overworked and they just die. Just like if you push a car engine into the red for too long. So a combination of high blood sugar levels caused by excessive intake of simple carbs like white breads, white pasta, sweets and soft drinks and high intake of saturated fats like animal fats eventually lead to the point where most of the insulin producing pancreatic cells just die. As I always say, the body is beautifully complex and the scariest part of all of this is that we don't even notice a single symptom until more than 80% of those pancreatic cells have already died. At this point, you are basically a type 2 diabetic and you will have to start relying on external medicines to help regulate your glucose levels. But Stefan, you said that insulin resistance is reversible. Yes, it is, if you catch it soon enough. If you're not already at the point where you need to start injecting insulin, then it's possible. And here's how. P.S. This will also help you if you've already passed the point of no return. Okay, step one, nutrition. The two main components you need to focus on when trying to recover from insulin resistance or prevent it is your fat intake and your carb intake. You get good fat and bad fat. The bad fat clings onto your arteries and cells and the good fat takes it off of the arteries and cells. 
The good fats are generally seen as your plant-based fats, therefore it would be good to add more of these in your diet, and obviously less of the bad fats, which are generally your animal-based fats. The second part you should focus on is carbs. Specifically, simple carbs versus complex carbs. The difference between the two in essence comes down to the effect they have on blood glucose levels. Simple carbs are easy to break down in the stomach, meaning that they cause a spike in blood sugar levels and thereafter a rapid crash as well. Complex carbs, however, take a little bit longer to break down in the stomach and therefore the spike in blood sugar level is lower and also it's stable for a prolonged period of time. This gives the body time to regulate blood glucose, meaning that the spike in insulin production needed isn't as high. So when buying food, it would be good to buy mostly complex carbs like brown pastas, brown rice and seed breads. Avoiding simple carbs such as soft drinks or white breads, white pastas would be key. Doing this will help reduce the amount of insulin needed to be produced by the pancreas and will give them some time to rest and recover. Great, so that was step one, handling your nutrition. Step number two is a little bit more exciting, exercise. We've all heard it before, exercise is good for you. But when it comes to insulin resistance, there are specific exercises that will give you the most bang for your buck. Our main goal with exercise would be to retrain the body to handle glucose. We need to specifically do exercises which prompts the body to move glucose from the bloodstream into the cell to be used as energy. A quick sports physiology lesson on energy systems will teach you that long duration, low intensity exercise predominantly use fat as fuel and high intensity, low duration, resistance training exercises predominantly use glucose as energy. So we have two schools of thought here. We can either do high intensity workouts and trust that over time the body will increase receptors on our cells, making them insulin sensitive again and fixing our problem, or we can go the other route by eating a very low carb diet. Basically a keto diet and teaching the body to predominantly use fat as fuel. We can even aid this process by only doing long duration, low intensity workouts like cycling. But this is the riskier option of the two. In all honesty, you rather want to fix the problem than find a way around it. That being said, if you are already at that point where your pancreatic cells have started dying and you already need insulin injections, then a low carb diet would definitely be best. All in all, as they say in medicine, prevention is better than the cure. Make sure that you exercise regularly, don't overconsume simple sugars, and make sure to add plenty of plant-based fats to your diet. The truth is nutrition and fitness can be complicated and we don't always know what's going on in our bodies. I hope that you got some valuable information from this video. I post new ones here every Monday. Make sure that you don't miss out on them. Click on the subscribe button below and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.